Okay. While we're getting started, I'm going to go through the learning sponsors already. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, a learning sponsors. Sue and I need Garlic in memory of Malka Perlman and Philip Mann. Yisrael David Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Beryl Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Yosef Meir Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Henya Rivka Pro Rosna Bat Arav Tzvi Hirsch, and a memory of family murdered in the Holocaust. Arav Tzvi Hirsch Ben Shlomo Yaakov, Sarah Bat Ephraim, Yisrael David Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Ephraim Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Adia Bat Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Miriam Bat Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Kessel Bat Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shalom Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shlomo Yaakov Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shmuel Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch. Leslie and Gail Kaplan, in memory of their parents, Harry and Marjorie Sedal, Irving and Pearl Kaplan, the children, grandchildren, and great grandchildren of Toby Paris, Sarah Tova, but Yisrael Dove, in her memory, Charlie Galfenstein and Sam Levine, in memory of Ramona Levine, Rachel Mata Bat Asher, friends of Nina Moynester, Nechama Asna Bat Yitzchak Aharon, many friends of Stephen Vigder, Vazecha Nishmat Simcha Melech Ben Meir Leib Halevi, friends of Marcy Kurtz, in memory of her great niece, Leah Bracha. Have a month of learning by the friends of Lydia and Abe Krauss in honor of their 50th anniversary by Mel and Harren Haller in memory of his mother, Fagabas Yaakov, by B. Pizer in memory of her stepfather, Avram Michal ben Shmuel Halevi, by Josh and Carol Sanborn in memory of his parents, Chiena Bar Aryeh Leib, Shmuel Aryeh ben Baruch, by Jill and Perry Meltzer in memory of her father, Yaakov ben Yosef, a week of learning by Charlie Gelfenstein and Sam Levine, in memory of Charlie's wife and Sam's sister, Manucha Sara Bad Yechiel Michal, in the memory of Sam's mother and Charlie's mother in law, Zissel Bad Yehoshua. Evelyn and Isaac Blackhor, in memory of her mother, Peril Rivka Bad Harav Menachem Mendel. Leonie Meiselman, in memory of her husband, Nisan Yitzchak Ben Shlomo Zalman. We have uh, today is the eighth. Right, so we have a day of learning by Milton and Gail Miller in memory of his father-in-law, Shmuel ben Shlomo, and by Sandra Levine and Brenda Parver in memory of their mother, Chaya Hudel Bas Yaakov Leib. And the Shemas have an Aliyah, Kranka Rafia, Velti Yeshira, Shem Matzliya, and the Chobane Yisrael, a good Gebenshtia. Okay. okay, we also wish uh, a Rafua Shlema to a number of people, those I assume that the Rav mentioned in uh, the Tifa Tehillim, and particularly our uh, Haver uh, Mel, who cannot be with us here today. Moshe Yosef. Moshe Yosef. Ben. Yeah. I've got it in my sitter. Okay. All right. So we are going to. Uh, get started momentarily with today finishing up the uh, Gemara Chagiga. Okay, is Erwin here? Yes. Erwin, guess who gets to do lead the Kaddish today? Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. With the hard words, yeah, Erwin. Yeah, I get to that. Okay. All right, wow, good. Nice setup. Okay. I'm impressed. Did you get my cartoon? No. Yeah. I haven't seen it. Uh, and uh, Alan, since you, you think you're up to leading that, doing the Hadron? Yeah? Can you do that? No. All right. Okay. All right. All right, there's plenty of seats. Yeah, I had 23 sign up. I made 30 seats. We, we may get a few uh, stragglers, visitors. <laughs> we already had. I had a Buddha guy out who tried to take drugs. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
All right. I'm going to get started, gentlemen. Thank you, Michael, for all your efforts. Thank you, Louvain. Thank you, whoever else was uh, Mashatef. Okay. You should have in front of you again, thank you, Michael, a uh, copy of uh, the last Amud for Chagiga, Kav Zion. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Uh huh. You sent that to me, Erwin. Yeah, I yeah. tried to. I okay. Okay, I'm starting from the bottom of the previous Amud. It said, "Vamarle lo shana b'tzipui omed, velo shana b'tzipui sheino omed." There is no difference between whether the plating or the coating stood out. Or whether it doesn't stand out. Lo shana b'chupa et levaz bazav, v'lo shana b'sheino chupa et levaz bazav, and it doesn't make any difference if it's been covered, just its rim or its handles, or it's the opposite, or it doesn't cover its rim or its handles. Okay, elashani shulchan, but rather the shulchan is different. Why is that the case? The Rahmana Kariya Eights. Okay, on the top of Kaf Zion, Amur Aleph. Okay, you should have the text in front of you. Okay, that the Torah refers to it as wood. Right? Right? Dichtiv, as it says in the Pasuk, Amizbeach Eights, first time it uses the phrase. Shaloshamot Gavoa, the Arko. Shtaim Amot Umiktautav, Love Achuva Kirotav, Eights, second time, by the Bear Eliza Shulchan, Ashelef Ne Hashem. Okay, so citing the Pasuk, it gives us a very clear. Where is Evgo? Oh, he can't sit over there. What's that guy standing behind you there? Behind this gentleman. That's walking with him? Yeah. Okay. Breathing. Uh, yeah. Okay, because he was a major sponsor. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're now on four lines down on Kof Zion Amud Aleph. Zev, where are you going? All right. Hey, 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 Maybe he has to go to the restroom. I'm sitting over there. I know. Maybe. Okay. So if we can uh, take a moment from eating to follow the Gemara as well. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I'm. Uh, I'm familiar with this crowd. Right. <laughs> okay. That's why it says aim kemach as opposed to aim, you know, shkia. <laughs> okay. Patach b'mizbeach v'siyem b'shulchan. Our text started talking about the Mizbech, the altar, but then it fin went on and finishes with the Shulchan. How is that possible? Rabbi Yochanan v'Reish Lakish to Amrei Travai. Okay, the two of them, Rabbi Yochanan and Reish Lakish, together they said, okay, Bizman Shabet HaMikdash Kayam, at the time when the temple was in existence, Mizbech Mechaper Al HaAdam, we said that the altar brings atonement for a person. Achshav shalachnu, okay. Shulchano shal adam mechaper alav. Now we say at this point that it is one's personal table that brings atonement. In other words, the idea that hospitality, okay, to strangers and to others is what provides that kapara, that uh, atonement. Okay. Going on now, a new piece in the Gemara. We said all of the utensils in the base of Mikdash had a seconds. In other words, they had replacements. Okay, so what does it mean? Okay, how can we say that the 
copper altar had a replacement. Mizbach Adama Taaseli. So we say so we say that it has the fact that it, there is a a uh, altar that's made from ground from earth. Okay, all right. So that could be theoretically, right? Can't won't be right. Can't since it's attached to the ground. We saw that already referred to in the Gemara. If it's attached to the ground, something cannot become tame. Therefore, it's very clear that the Mizbach and the cannot become tame. Okay. What about the other Mizbech? Mizbech Hazahav. Dichtiv. What about that? There we have another pasuk that refers to Hamenorah Vahamizbachot. Okay. The fact that the pasuk cites multiple, okay, two, okay, altars, and it has in the same pasuk a reference to the Mizbeach. What does the Gemara tell us? Okay, itkush Mizbachot ze la ze. That the Gemara tells us that we have an association between the golden altar, that which is parallel then to the copper altar, and we've already just said that the copper altar cannot become tame because it's connected to the ground, and therefore we therefore say that the mizbech hazahav that also cannot become tame as a result. Okay, new piece again in the Gemara. The Chachamim Omrim and the sages say, "Mepnei but because they are considered plated or coated. Okay, Ad Rabbah, just the opposite, says the Gemara. Okay, all right. What is the case? Okay, we would say those could be Makabel Tumi. Okay, um, we have empty seats, right? We have one over there next to Ernie. We have, where is, okay. All right, so what happens? Ad Rabba, just the opposite. Kevan de Mitsupin, we say since they are coated, in other words, coated with gold or with bronze, maybe we're gonna argue here that they are considered a metal utensil, okay? In that case. All right, maybe that's the point. Ninhu mitam o. Therefore, they are capable of becoming tame if we consider them metal utensils. Ema, I would therefore say, that the sages ought to say, okay, that they are considered capable of tuma because they are coated. All right. And if you want, I would say, okay. Um, Sid, is there anyone sitting next to you? No? Okay. All right. I'm going to make a comment. All right. Rabbanan the Rabbi Eliezer. Ka'amre Maida Tech. Okay. She's been coming out. Okay. You're right. Rabbanan says to Rabbi Yaza, as we said, what's what's the view? Mishum de Mitsupin. Are we saying that we're going to say that that's their view? Okay, because it's coded. Miftal Batil Sipuyin Gabaihu, says the Gemara, trying to explain to us that the, that the coding is nullified here. Because here we have the exceptions. Since it's made from wood, we don't follow the coating. Okay. And the, remember the Pasuk we said saw that it specifically said wood. Okay. And so therefore, again, it be, does not become capable of tumor. Okay. Amar Rabbi Abahu. Now we continue. Says Rabbi Abahu, Amar Rabbi Elazar. Talmid Chacham, Ain. <clears throat> to me, ain or shall Gehinam sholet it by him. The light of Gehinam doesn't rule over them. Kal v'chomer, how much more so, misalandaria, okay, from a salamander. 
Okay, it was a variety of salamander that uh, was uh, art scroll, I'm sorry, Corin, if you're using Corin, actually has a picture of the animal. Okay, that's a, called a fire salamander because it looks like it has- Because it takes 10 years of fire to be born. Well, that's it's something nice. else. Okay, but it, it looks like on its mm -hmm. skin, it has splurts of, of uh, yellow, okay? So the, what does the Gemara then say? All right, Kavachoma mi selendara, uma selendara shetoledet esh, that this, this kind of salamander, it's as if it's born out of fire. He has, right? All right, that's the case. Hasach midama. Ain or sholetet bo, one who utilizes and anoints himself with its blood. Fire does not uh, injure the person, let's say, put it that way. Talmid chacham, shekol gufan esh, the sage where their entire body, body is almost uh, because they have esh hatora. Okay, right? That's right, compete right. Dichtiv, as it says, halo kol divrai ke'esh ne'um Hashem. Right? So citing the Pasuk that his words are like fire. Right? That's, by the way, where the organization gets its name. Or at least that's what my son tells me who works for it. Okay? Right? So what happens? Echad kama v'chama. How much more so? Okay? That the sage... That's right. Amar Reish Lakish says Reish Lakish. Ain or shall gehinam sholet et poshe Yisrael. That the fire of Gehenim does not uh, even in, uh, injure sinners of the Jewish people. Kal v'chomer mi mizbach hazahav. How much more so that we learn this from the, the golden altar. In other words, the altar in which Incense and carbonos, no, all this, right, is burned right on the altar, right on the on the surface on its coating. zahav love ella ke dinar zahav. The same way that the golden altar, the level, the thickness of its coating, is such that it is the thickness of a gold dinar, in other words, a gold coin, kama, right? And yet, kama shanim, ein haor sholetet bo, over all the years, okay? It, it, it does not burn through that gold coating, okay? To it, right? Poshe Yisrael, shemalein mitzvot kerimo, sinners among the Jewish people, who nevertheless are full of mitzvot. They may sin, but they also do mitzvot, and they're full of mitzvot like a pomegranate, right? Dichtiv kepelech harimon rakatach, all right? Again, full like a rimon. Al tikre rakatech, don't call it as the Pasuk reads rakatech, ela rakanim shabach, but rather the rekanim shabach, those that are empty without missing. How much more so? All right. Now, Alan, I guess Alan, since Alan is leaving today, okay, we want to be mechabed him as well as thank again all those that contributed to our Suda to do the Hadran. Erwin, we ask to do the Kaddish, and then uh, we'll go on from there. First of all, thank you for everything for leading us in learning, and also Michael was really who took the work for him when he was- And Mr. Friedman, and also I got a few bucks from uh, Reese. <laughs> <laughs> uh, talk about leading me, you can share my music. Oh, oh, I thought you were talking about paying for the food. The Icar is the food. That's separate. I'd also got to thank you for the food and for anybody else who contributed to it. And a big Yashikar to all of us who uh, participated in the cheer and commission. Unfortunately, we have to run very soon because we're leaving for New York this morning. Thank you.
I thought he was honoring me by getting this Mishnah until I looked at it. And then I realized he stuck me with it. So first I'd like to just comment all of, all of the previous Siyumim, we invited the wives. On this occasion, we only invited the men 
because frankly, I didn't want to spend 600 bucks. So I apologize to all your wives. If there's an extra bagel, you're free to scramble and get the four extra bagels and bring them home. Perhaps the next CM will go back to a restaurant when women are invited. All right, Yvamos is probably, if not the most difficult, one of the most difficult Gemaras. And uh, I, so I'll just give a very brief overview. The Torah considers the purpose of marriage peru or avu. You're required, a man is, women don't have the mitzvah, but men are required to marry. And they're required by the Torah to generate offspring. So Machlaikis, two, uh, two boys and two girls, one of each, two children, different shitas. Normative halacha is two boys and two girls. If, you know, God it helps do that. If a man dies, Prior to having offspring, his brothers in sequence of age have to step in and marry the woman and produce children. And then those children, like Ruvain and Shimon. So Ruvain has a wife, Nebuch Ruvain is Nifter. So Shimon marries Ruvain's wife. And the first child is named Ben or Bas Ruve, even though Shimon is the biological father. Now, sometimes that's an impossibility. So I'll just give one example. Ruvain has a daughter and Shimon marries that daughter. Now from a Torah, we all think that's weird. But from a Torah perspective, that's the best possible shidduch. To marry your father's sibling is the best possible shidduch. Now, Shimon, who's married to Bas Ruvain, Shimon never dies. So it's not possible for Ruvain to perform Yibum because he's the girl's father. So it would... And not only is he, he, she then putter from marrying and Ruvain is putter from marrying her, but if the guy has five wives, all the other four wives are also putter. There is no yibum. And since there can be no yibum, there is also no chalitza. Now, what happens if Shimon, in this case, divorces one of his wives, okay, and then dies. Uh, uh, so that wife is out of the picture, and he could be, but the other wives are all Potter, and if siblings marry any of those girls later on, they marry the Elmana, unless you're a coin, you can do that. Then and he dies without children, then all of his wives are also, and this goes on forever. So if a guy has 93 children and they pass the wives on, then, uh, and they die childless, then Yibum and Kalitza are not applicable. Now, unfortunately, the women have no say in the matter. They have to marry the older brother. All right, so now we just explained that there are situations in which there's an erva involved, a forbidden union. Whenever there's an erva involved, then none of the wives of that person, if even one, if one is an erva case, go through the chalitza process. So chamesh esrei nashim peturos, there are 15 categories of erva where the chalitza process and or, and, or you know, yibum do not apply. Tzorosehem, v'tzorosehem, also co-wives and co-wives of the co-wives, as I briefly explained, min ha-chalitza or min yibum do not go through chalitza and do not go through yibum. And I'm sure the Gemara will at some point ask why it's in that order, because it really should be Yibum 
that's the prime thing. And then if they don't, if he doesn't want to marry her, it's Chalitza. But the Gemara puts it in that order. Ad soifa oilam. And the process is it goes to infinity if someone has lucky enough to have that many sons and there aren't that many women around, so they keep serially marrying their sisters in law. The Iluhain, this is the list. Bito, I mentioned a man's daughter who marries his sibling, she obviously cannot marry him. So she and all her co wives are not involved in Yibum or Halitza. Basbito, his granddaughter from his daughter. Basbino, his granddaughter from his son. Bas Ishto, Mr. Schwartz marries an Almana, Mrs. Abramowitz. Mrs. Abramowitz has a daughter. So now Schwartz to the Abramowitz girl is an Erva. So if the Abramowitz girl marries one of Schwartz's siblings and he dies childless, there's no Yibum in that family with all of those co-wives. Ubas Bino, similarly, the daughter of Mrs. Abramowitz's son. Ubas uh, Bita, the daughter of uh, Mrs. Abramowitz's daughter. Vachamaisai his mother-in-law, the Aim Hamaso, his grandmother-in-law, the Aim Hamil, the mother of his father-in-law, Alchoso, his wife's sister, Meimo from the same mother, Omeachos Imo Viachos Ishto, or the sister of his mother or the sister of his wife, the Aishas Achim, his brother's wife, the Amo Aishas Achim Shalohoyu Biolomo. Okay, Ruvain gets married and he dies childless, Rahmano Litzlan. After Ruvain dies, Yitzchak is born to Ruvain's parents. So theoretically, when Yitzchak grows up to be 13 years old, he's got to marry the Almana who had no children. But since she's his brother's wife, even though he's not alive anymore, it's still an erva and he can't marry her. There is no Yivam, there is no Chalitza. And if the deceased, the distantly deceased Ruvain had a whole bunch of other wives, they're also exempt. The Colosso, his daughter in law, that is number 15. Okay, now. Yechulam im meso. If the if the erva lady, in other words, the lady who cannot be married to the man, if she is deceased, oh, may I know? Okay, so from a Torah perspective, a father has the right to betroth his minor daughter to anybody he wants. And that is a Torah marriage. It's usually economic, usually a poor person gives his daughter to a rich man and either the rich man or the rich man's son marries the girl. That's a Torah way of spreading the wealth. Now, if the father is dead and the family is in a difficult economic situation. The rabbis permit the girl's mother or the girl's brother to arrange a marriage. She's remember, she's not 12 yet, to arrange a marriage with a man. That is only rabbinic. That is only a rabbinic marriage. And when the girl both <clears throat> reaches 12 chronologically, and has simonim has uh, reaches puberty, she has to do both. 
she has the right to say, I don't want to marry that ugly old man. And she can walk off. And it is if she was never married because it was only rabbinic. If she does not walk off, then it, it is a marriage, but it's only a rabbinic marriage, which now creates a problem. Because if she would be an erva to somebody, <coughs> but it's not a Torah marriage. So if, for example, she's married to, so what the Torah says is, well, we can't do Yibam because maybe, it, you know, because it's a Torah level, and therefore we also do not do Chalitza. However, that does not exempt all the co-wives because it's not a rabbinic, it's only a rabbinic marriage. Kulan im meso, if the woman is dead, oh may I know, or she says, I don't want to marry that old man, be married to that old man. Onish garsho, or the, uh, uh, the erva lady is divorced by her husband. Oceanimsa Alionis. Okay. As I pointed out, many, maybe even most marriages took place prior to the woman reaching puberty. So Ruvain marries Rivka. And when Rivka reaches puberty, there are problems. From a medical perspective, she has an imbalance. She has too little test, uh, uh, estrogen and too much testosterone. So she does not grow breasts. She may grow facial hair. She may have a deep voice. She may even develop an Adam's apple. But she has the genitalia of a woman. Now, when this guy married her, she wasn't, didn't reach puberty <laughs> yet. So none of those factors would have been evident. So the halacha is that if she's an Ilonis, the marriage is considered retroactively has never had taken place. It's a mekach tos, because if you knew this woman was incapable of bearing children, you wouldn't have married her. Now, Fakert, if she's 19 and she's an Ilonis and you marry her anyway, then the marriage is called. But in any way, we're assuming here, you, somebody had a question? So we're assuming here, he married her prior to the knowledge that she's an Ilanish, and therefore the marriage never existed. And therefore, if he dies, the other women are not considered potter from the Yibun process. And then the Gemara, the Mishnah just makes an observation that on the list are people like your mother-in-law. Now, if your mother-in-law was incapable of having children, she certainly wouldn't have become your mother-in-law because she wouldn't have had a daughter, right? So the Gemara says, If you're talking about your mother-in-law or your grandmother-in-law on either side, obviously that can't be. Shenimza Ilonis, oh, she she may I know she either be, was can't have been an Ilonis, and she couldn't have been a girl who threw out her old ugly husband. So those can't happen, and therefore they're just not on the list for that family. Okay, Kesa Petro and how is it come out that all the co-wives are not? do not have to wait to, to a brother to, before they can go off and marry someone else. I saw Beto. Okay, all right, so we'll stop there. Okay, fine, we'll stop there. I understand, but the mission is only dealing with the first generation. Right, but that may be that may be that may be a definition of currents. It doesn't have to be old and ugly. Well, typically the men are in their thirties and the girls are are in their single digits. 
I think they brought the box of uh, of benches downstairs. That's why there aren't too many there. Huh? 